I welcome all of you to the class. This is our first class on our new course. The name of the course is Mechanics of Materials Second. As far as the course Mechanics of Materials Second is concerned, the course is the application of those concepts which we have discussed in Mechanics of Materials One. Yeah, we can say that Mechanics of Materials 2 course is an advancement over Mechanics of Materials 1. As far as our course curriculum is concerned, in this course, we are going to study first the deflection of the beams. And essentially, we have to start with the deflection of statically indeterminate beams. Before I make you understand what we mean by the deflection, if you look at the picture on the screen, which is taken from the book of R.C. Hibbler. This picture talks about, it depicts the bend, we can say, as a layman can talk about it. He says that there's a bend in a pole, okay? As far as the pole is concerned, the pole essentially is straight, okay? But this athlete, maneuvers or uses it in such a way that this pole undergoes the bend, okay? So it means the pole has deflected from its original configuration. Its original configuration was it was a straight, but now it's in the form of an arc. So the transformation of a machine element or a structural component from one configuration to another configuration is what we call as the deflection, okay? So uh, if we go to the picture two, the picture two talks about a beam, okay? So first of all, let me make you understand what is a beam. As far as a beam is concerned, a beam is a machine element or a structural component, we should say. It is a structural component, okay? Which has some length and which has some area of cross-section. It has length and it has some area of cross-section. Okay. So, so its length, let me suppose its length is L. This length is known as span. And the beam is also having some area of cross-section. Let us denote that by capital A, okay? Now, if you look at this dimension, we can write that this dimension by small h, which is known as the depth of the beam. It's known as depth. So this is the depth. And this dimension we write by small b, what's known as the width of the beam. This is the width of the beam. So what is the function of this beam? The function of the beam is to support the load. Its function is to support. It supports the load. The function of the beam is to support the load. And the load, most often the type of load or most often the on the basis of the direction of the load that is to which the beam is subjected, it is what we call as, it is perpendicular to the axis of the beam. That is, load is perpendicular to the axis of the beam. That is, if you look at the axis of the beam, the axis of the beam is this. This is the axis of the beam, okay? And most often, we apply the load in this direction, okay? So you often find, you will see the diagrams where the load will be applied in this direction. But it's not always that the load is perpendicular to the axis of the beam. Sometimes the load is applied at an angle to the beam. That is, sometimes the load will be essentially like this, sorry. Essentially, sometimes the load is applied like this. That is, the load is at an angle. The load is at an angle, that's called angle theta the load is at an angle to the axis of the beam. So this structural element or this machine component, which is subjected to a load or which 
supports the load acting at any angle to the axis of this element axis acting at any angle this is known as their beam fine now if you look at the if you look at your book if you look at your book there are many examples given many pictures given where we can at least realize and understand that the primary function of the beam is to support the load for example look at this picture look at this picture in this picture you are having a beam over here that is let me annotate it if i start annotating then essentially this is the beam okay this is the beam this is beam. this is the beam this is the beam okay this is the beam this also the beam this also the beam okay so if you look at the arrangement that is given the function of all these beams is to support the load which will be over it okay so there is this is a roof on this roof there will be load there may be snow there may be some persons walking there may be cabins so on and so forth there may be a building over it so primary function of all these beams is to withstand the load above them okay so when we talk about the beam the function of the beams is to withstand or support the loads over them okay in the same way let's see a few more pictures where it gets clear to us what does a beam do what is the primary function of the beam okay so this was one of the pictures that talks about the beam that depicts that the function of the beam is to uh, is to withstand the load above it now uh, let me look into few more pictures by which it can get a little bit clear to us more so what the beam does um there are lots of uh, pictures given in this book that talk about that take this beam as a, uh, that make us understand that the function of the beam is to support the load above it okay anyways let me uh, go quickly through the page the example portions see how the uh yes here look here this is a very important picture this is a very very important picture look here the beam is somewhere here this is the beam this portion is the beam sorry clear drawings this portion is the beam okay so from all these diagrams what is clear to us is the beam is a very important structural element or a machine component and its function is to withstand the load above it okay now uh, let me go to my lesson for today as far as the today's talk is concerned we'll straight away start our chapter that is we need to understand so once we realize that when we are talking about the beams the primary function of the beams is to support the loads above them now we have to talk about the deflection of beams we will be talking about the deflection of beams what is the deflection of beams what do you mean by the deflection of beams let me take an example of a beam which is fixed at one end and is free at another end okay so let's talk about a beam which is fixed at one end this is a fixed end and is free at another end this beam is known as a cantilever beam this is known as a cantilever beam now if you look at the tendency of this beam this beam this portion of the beam this will be made of some material maybe it's made of concrete it's made of concrete or i should say reinforced con concrete i can say that it's made of reinforced concrete reinforced concrete 
or it's made of some material like steel. Okay. And this cantilever beam, this will be this portion. This is what you call as a span of the beam. It will be having some weight. Let me suppose its weight is W. Okay. So on account of this weight, on account of its weight, this beam will have tendency to go down because of the gravitational force. Okay. So the effect of its weight will be to move the beam to cause motion in the beam in the downward direction. That is, there is a tendency in this beam to move in the downward direction. So we want that this beam should not move in the downward direction because if the beam moves in the downward direction, then there's a failure of the beam. Okay, then it's a beam failure. So what prevents the beam from moving down? Okay, it is the lock here. What we should say the fixed end. The fix here, the fix at this end, that's called end A. This is say for example end B. Fix at end A prevents the beam from going down. And in terms of mechanics, we can say that the beam is tending to go down because it is subjected to the gravitational force W. Okay, now the effect of this gravitational force W will be cancelled when we'll be having an force acting in the opposite direction having the same magnitude as W. That is, at this very end, we must be having what we call as reaction at end A. R. So, the reaction at end A, in this case, when there is no load acting on the beam, is created because of the gravitational weight. So, gravitational weight on the beam is responsible for creating the reaction at the fixed end and we write that as Ra, number one. Number two is, so we can at least say that when we have a cantilever beam, we, re we represent it in the form of a line. Okay, so at end A, we'll be having the reaction, what we call as Ra. Okay, and we know this reaction is created in order to balance the weight of this span or weight of the beam. Number one. Number two is in most of our analysis, we assume that the weight of the beam is zero. We assume that the effect of the weight is to be neglected. Okay. And only the force acting on the beam is the external force. Say, for example, load P. If you have a case like this where we are neglecting the effect of the weight and we assume that there is a load P, concentrated load, acting at any point on the cantilever beam, then it's quite clear that again the reaction A will be created and that reaction RA will now be equal to P. Okay, so as to create no motion in the beam. From mechanics we know RA is acting upwards, RA, P is acting downwards, minus P equal to zero, therefore RA becomes equal to P. Fine, so this RA is created because of P now when we neglect the effect of the weight of the beam. Okay, now as we go ahead, there is one more tendency in the beam, that is, this beam has a rotational tendency. One tendency we talked about, that this beam has a tendency to move down. So there can be the translational motion in the beam, which is being neglected, which is being nullified by the reaction at the fixed end. That's okay. There is one more tendency in the beam. That is, instead of moving down, the beam can rotate about an axis passing through point A. This is quite interesting. That is, let me clean this. At end A, the beam has the tendency of rotation. That is, if you take a span, this is beam, this is end A, this is end B. Now say for example, we have applied, okay, let me take the effect of the weight. W, let me suppose weight is acting at the center of this beam, okay. Let's assume an axis passing through the point A. Let me take an axis like this, okay? If you take this to be our x-axis, this is the y-axis. Let's say this is our z-axis, okay? Let z-axis is perpendicular. Now, from point A to the point of application of this beam, there is what you call as, this is a force arm. This is the force arm. So if this length is say, for example, x, 
then this w will create moment will create moment and the moment will be equal w into x and this moment will try to rotate this beam in which direction in the clockwise direction that is this beam has a tendency to move in this direction there may be some rotational motion let me call this as theta and this rotational motion can be created in the beam because of the moment and that is equal w into x this is also catastrophic for us we don't want this beam to behave in such a way we neither want the beam to undergo the translation motion nor we want the beam to undergo the rotational motion because if this is the case say for example we have some people here we have some people here okay so once these once we are loading this beam then the beam is undergoing the rotational motion and these people will fall like this okay so this is catastrophic we don't want this thing to happen in a beam we want this beam to be uh, stable as far as the rotational motion is concerned we want it to be stable as far as the translational motion is concerned now for this beam to be stable in terms of rotation okay we want that the effect of w into x which is clockwise should be neglected should be nullified how that can be nullified that can be nullified only when at the fixed end a moment is created in the anti clockwise direction okay and the magnitude of that moment should be same as the magnitude of the moment created by the external load okay that is we write at the fixed end we have the moment and we write that moment as ma this is moment at the fixed end this is how we represent a cantilever beam in case of a cantilever beam at the fixed end we have two reactions we have reaction ra we have reaction ma ma is the moment reaction ra is the force reaction ra prevents the translational motion in the beam and ma prevents the rotational motion in the beam so once we talk about the beams once we uh, you know start defining the beams as the machine element or the structural components which withstand or which uh, uh, which are used to uh, that are used to withstand the load in a direction at a, acting at some angle to the axis of the beam okay at the supports we have to be very careful that the function of the supports is to generate the reactions maybe the moment reactions maybe the force reactions to nullify the effect of the external force okay that's what a beam is used now when we talk about the deflection of the beam let me simply take this cantilever again into consideration what we do what we define for the cantilever beam can be generalized for other types of beams let me suppose we have a cantilever beam this is end a this is end b and say for example the span of the beam is say for example l okay and this cantilever beam is subjected to the concentrated load having magnitude p at its free end okay now what happens practically we see that this beam which was initially straight okay the axis of the beam initially was straight this was the axis of the beam now what happens under the influence of the external load this beam the axis of the beam changes that is we practically see that the beam bends like this okay so this point let me call this as b prime b prime was actually at point b now under the influence of this concentrated load this point b has moved from b to b prime we say that b has undergone deflection and we write deflection by nave we say the beam has undergone deflection this beam has deflected this beam has undergone deflection now if you like look at this point this point has also moved from here to here this point has moved from here to here so points have moved so this is how this is the new configuration of this beam this is the actual configuration of this beam and the transformation to the new configuration from the original configuration is what we call as the deflection of this beam okay in the same way we talk about what is known as a simply supported beam as far as a simply supported beam is concerned it is a beam having a pin sub roller support at one end and a pin support at another end okay now again let me suppose that this beam is subjected to some load we will be defining this is by the way known as a roller support 
we will talk in detail what is a roller spool roller spool and this is known as a pin spool okay this is a pin spool now say for example this beam is subjected to a uniformly distributed load udl its magnitude is w newton per meter or kilonewton per meter now what will happen initially the axis of the beam was straight this was the axis of the beam now under the influence of this load this beam bends like this the beam undergoes the bending okay this point was initially here now has moved to this point this point has also translated this point has also translated okay so we say this curve is now the this is the deflection or this curve is known as a deflection curve this curve is known as the deflection curve of the beam this curve is known as the deflection curve of the beam okay one more important thing is when we define out the deflection so deflection is simply that the change in configuration the change in the uh, the the axis of the beam has undergone the motion it has the points have shifted from its initial configuration to the final new configuration under the influence of the external load that's what we define as a deflection okay now there is one more important thing to define that is if you look at the beam if you look at this beam let let's go back to the cantilever beam in the cantilever beam if you look at the point b before the application of the load p and you draw a tangent the tangent is in this direction and the axis of the beam is also in the same direction fine that is before the application of the concentrated load p if you draw the tangent at any point of the beam the tangent and the axis of the beam they match they coincide now once we apply the concentrated load p or any type of load p this is the deflection curve of the beam now let's draw a tangent at point b prime as we draw the tangent at point b prime the tangent is now in this direction okay initial axis was this initially the axis of the beam was this so it means now the tangent which was initially coinciding with the axis of the beam now is at an angle theta let's suppose with the initial axis of the beam this is known as slope the angle of this tangent is known as slope so understanding the slope and deflection of the beam is very very important in the design of the beam in the proper functioning of the beam knowing the slope and deflection of the beam is very very important for us so the question is that how do we find the deflection in the beam how do we calculate the slope in the beam that's one part of the question number 2 is first of all before we calculate the deflection and slope of the beam what is very important for us is to understand why we are interested in calculating the slope and deflection of the beam there must be some reason for it and the reason we can at least think in this way that it's very important to calculate the slope and deflection of the beam the reason for this is because if there is too much of the deflection if there is too much too big value of the slope then slope and deflection can cause beam failures they can cause beam failures okay say for example this is the beam we want this beam to be like this but as we are loading this beam suppose the deflection of the beam is very very large as the deflection of the beam is very very large it is equivalent that the beam has failed we don't want this thing to happen in the beams so the question is how do we calculate the slope and deflection of the beam that is the topic that we have to take up how do we calculate the slope and deflection in the beam the first thing is why are we interested in understanding the slope and deflection the reason for that is because slope and deflection can cause beam failures we want this slope and deflection to be under control now the second part is how do we calculate the slope and the deflection 